You go out there and help the community, and that's really all you can do. All right. Brother Dutch, good evening, my friend. What up, homie? <laughs> Man, I'm good. Blessed, brother. I can't complain about nothing. Everything is great. Wonderful. So it's 70 degrees up here in uh, Virginia. It's got to be bananas down there in Texas. Uh, not really, man. It's uh, actually a little cool today. Oh, okay. Yeah, 60 degrees, which is crazy. But it's snowing in my hometown of St. Louis. That's crazy. Get out of here. It's snowing. Yeah. Yeah. Global warming, man. You know what's going on. Crazy. Scary stuff. Roundup, come on in. Greetings, class. What's going down? It is good to see you guys again. I uh, took a little sabbatical for a week ago and it went to Atlanta for spring break. You guys didn't fear for me for about a week, but I'm back and I'm uh, I'm honored to just be hanging out with some winners in the game. My boy Dutch Jackson down in uh, Dallas, Fort Worth area of Texas. What's going on, Roundup fam? How you doing, brother Chris? Yeah, man. Everything's smooth. Round up. I am Chris Haskins. I'm going to be your host on this ride tonight. I'm going to be your pilot as we go 40,000 feet in the air to look at real estate wholesaling for newbies, for beginners. It's crazy that I'm speaking these words because I love hanging out with Dutch because we very rarely talk about money. We more or less talk about ideas, how we can help, how we can serve, who we can serve, what is the purpose, why are we doing all this? And Dutch is, uh, I don't know how he comes. I call him the Andre Herrera of the real estate investing community because he's, he's got ideas. <laughs> ideas just come from, they just come and come and come and come. You got so many ideas, right, working on a book. So, Dutch, it's an honor to be in your presence tonight, my friend. Thank you. Thank you, brother. Honor to be in yours, man. You know, we're just trying to uh, make a change in the world, brother. That's all right. Brother. It's crazy you say that because so many people, I feel, when you sit around and talk about money, it's irrelevant. I mean, a dollar is only a dollar. You know, you got to have it has to have some type of driving force behind it. Right. Right. You are correct, man. You're correct. And everybody talk about getting money, but nobody talk about better themselves to attract money. That's right. You do have to attract it. You have to turn it to attract it. That's right. So round up tonight. Dutch is um actually. Oh, we got a new member here. Sorry about that. Jarda Bradford. Hey, are you a model or a real estate investor? Which one are you? I don't know. <laughs> nice picture you got there. That is a gorgeous picture. Thank you so much for supporting my Roundup community. Roundup, there's a button below. It says join. It just uh, it gives my busy professionals and entrepreneurs just a little sec something extra where they can ask questions and be the first in line uh, to deal with, to interface with our guests. And all it costs you is a, a cup, of car cup of Starbucks a month. So thank you so much for supporting our channel. Dutch, you are the man of the hour. Tell us what brings us here today, my friend. Give us a back. First of all, Tell my Roundup homies who you are, and then let's talk about what, what brings us here today about real estate wholesaling. Man, look, my name is Dutch Jackson. Uh, I got laid off uh, from the corporate world in 2018. Back against the wall, um, I had to do I had to do something. So, you know, I was always on YouTube looking how to make some extra money. Come up, you know, a quick, quick job, quick this, quick that. And I, <laughs> I ran into something called wholesaling you know, online. So I, it, it really intrigued me. I started studying it, studying it. And what wholesaling is, is uh, is real estate. When you find someone who wants to sell their house, you get the house on the contract. You find an end buyer, somebody who will buy that property off of you and you keep a fee in the middle. So and I, I noticed if you never heard that before, but I get a seller who want to sell for 80000 I get it under contract for eighty thousand, but then I pass it off to another investor for ninety thousand, and I keep the ten in between. Mm -hmm. So when I saw this, I thought this was—I didn't think it was real, you know. <laughs> Why? Well, let's stay here, Dutch, because a lot, a lot of people think that it may not be real. What, what, what was going through your mind when you saw that? That whole this—it's almost shuffling paper. Another, another scam. I'm like, man, you know, you know how we think. Anything we see about making money, you know. As uh, you know, black people, people, minorities, we we're so skeptic about trying something or spending money on something. We always feeling like we gonna get got, you know. So that was my that was my mindset then. I'm like, man, this ain't real. But as the months rolled on, I just kept watching more videos, more videos, more videos. Bills was piling up. I wasn't working. I jumped out. 
man, in the first three months, I did my first deal. You know? Wow. And the thing about me, I, I don't do analysis paralysis where I just sit and watch something and keep watching it and, and don't have any action. I'm more action oriented first. So I jumped out talking to sellers, trying to get somebody in the contract, end up doing it and check this out. The first person I got in the contract, I didn't even know how to fill out the contract. I was, <laughs> I, I was on YouTube watching the tutorial. I was just like, yeah, fine. Your name here. Uh, While you were with them? While I was with them. Oh, wow, Dutch. That just let that just lets you know determination, man. You if you determine to do something, you're gonna make it happen. But I ended up doing the sale, I ended up finding the end buyer. I made four thousand dollars on my first deal. Man, I'm talking about change. Tell me my about life. that. Tell me about that check, D. Oh man. And look, I came from you know, I came from corporate America making 70 70 thousand plus a year, but it was just something about getting a check that I created out of like thin air. It wasn't, it didn't come from a job. It was just, I, I did this and my, it blew my mind, man. I'm like, man, I can straight get out of here and create and create my own money. You know, getting out of that working a nine to five mindset. I was just like, bro, I can actually make a living for myself. So I think more than anything, even more than doing a deal, just the feeling that I created my own income, was more exciting than anything. You created your own income. I guess that's the entrepreneurial spirit that was coming up. Man. Is that, the, is that would, would you say that's the entrepreneurial spirit coming out? Yeah, man. And I've always had it, you know, but you know, when you program to have a nine to five and things like that, you look at that as the norm. You know, what we do, trying to do our own thing without working a nine to five is kind of, um, you know, it's weird to people. They can't really fathom it, fathom it, because uh, you have to change your mindset in your head, man. Everything got to change for you to, you know, not depend on a check every week or every two weeks. You gonna eat when you go kill something. Kill something. Yeah. So it's a mental shift first. But uh, man, it, it was yeah. like high that first check, brother. That was a high, high. Gone the same week, but it was a high. <laughs> I was so behind on everything. That was a blessing from God. Dutch is Dutch is working on a training course. We're gonna get to all this stuff tonight. But Dutch, I want to talk about why did you leave? Did you leave the job? They let you go. Tell me about that. How did what, how did you transition out of that? We had some differences. Uh, they they let me go, man. You know, I wasn't. I I uh, I had corporate burnout, man. Where yeah. I'm working, I'm working, and I'm a black man working in corporate America, which is tough. I'm working and working, and you know, I feel like I'm working more hours. I'm not getting treated the same. I'm not, you know, no matter how much I did, you know, the when the promotions came up, I always got passed up, and I'm training the new boss for the position that I always got passed on. You know, no so what to do. Hey. no matter what I do, so I tried to. You know, I tried to work through it, but man, once you, you get burnt out working in corporate America where you're feeling like you're doing so much, yeah, I appreciate you and you you stuck at a certain level, it burned you out. It's you gotta know? be rough. I know it's rough. I mean, I've been there, it's been many, many years, but I'm just imagining most of my most of my roundupers are entrepreneurs and solopreneurs that either have a full time job and do this on the side or they're full time. So I'm sure they can relate. Yeah, sure man. they can relate. Yeah, yeah. So I got burnt out and I just couldn't perform. Like they wanted me to perform, man. I, you know, or I come in, you late. Okay, well, what's going on? Like just burnt out, man. I couldn't. I couldn't, you know. So I knew it was time to go when I got burnt out. Wow. Uh -huh. I'm excited for you, man. I mean, I, it is challenging. When I look back, I got fired seven times. I remember like my last one. <laughs> I cried. I'm gonna be honest. I'm like, damn. I just maybe I am a piece of crap. You know, I, I really thought I wasn't worth anything at that time. But really, I was letting the universe know that you got something better in store for you. Did you feel like that? Man, no matter what I did, I feel like I just mess up all the time. <laughs> <Me too. laughs> I thought I was the perfect employee, and I just make a boneheaded move. But that's what the, the institutions do to you. They make it feel like it's you. you wow. Know? 
they're they like master manipulators to make you feel like if it was a problem, that's something you created. It's not us. It's never us. Wow. It's gotta be you. You know, that's so deep, I felt that a lot, brother, that I could just I couldn't get right. I no matter when I tried. That is so deep. You know? Like, wow, dude. I we never talked about that together, but I'm <laughs> I'm looking past me. I'm like, man, I'm just a piece of crap. Maybe I need to just go just give up, give it in. Give master it. manipulators, brother. Master. Wow. wow. That's rough. All right. So you're you did your first wholesale deal roundup. We're gonna get to this because Dutch is working on his course, just dropping Mother's Day. He's gonna be going of all this stuff. But I want to make sure you know who this guy is, right? Because he's tight. He still teaches me, even though he's new to the game, he still teaches me stuff because I'm like an old dog. I need to learn these new tricks and all that stuff. <laughs> so you get the four thousand dollars, Dutch. Tell me about your life after that. You got that check that make you uh, made you realize hey, this may be something that I can do. Yep, maybe. Uh... I got the first check, but then I went on a full month drought, brother. Oh I, wow, man! Got the first check. Okay, I became I was super high on it. Like man, I got this money, man. Four months later, nothing, mm -hmm. you know. And uh, it, it got to a point where I was about to just throw the towel in, man. And I had a choice to get a job or continue to do what I was doing, and I declined mm -hmm. the job, and that was. That was crazy. But as soon as I declined the job, I think it was like probably two weeks later, I got another deal. Then another week later, another deal. Then four deals. It was crazy, man. It was boom, 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 boom. They just, you know, 20 deals my first year. So wow. I made more than what I was making at my corporate job. Tell which, me about that. Go ahead. Go ahead. I'm sorry. No, I, I just said it, it blew me away. You know, like, First off, the first the first four the first four thousand I made, I was just like, wow, man, I created my own money. But then it got to a point where I was making more than what I was working. It was just like scary because you realize the power, you know what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. man, I've been working with it ever since. You know, it's been my bread and butter along with other things. You know, I you know, I, I'm videography, I do music, but the real estate is uh it's really changed my life, man. And it's nothing like knowing you got a backup plan. You got a tool in a tool belt where if you fall off, you don't have a job, you can hit for 5,000. You can hit for 10,000, 15,000, 30,000 on the deal. <clears throat> so just having that skill is powerful in life, period. Because it's something you can always do. Wow, dude, that's deep, dude. Yeah. I love talking to you, brother. You just take me back to my 2004 <laughs> when I got fired. And I got my last job. I got fired in 99. Mm -hmm. When I was, I just turned instantly to an entrepreneur. I'm like, I just, I'm sick of being fired, dude. I, just, I'm, I can't take it no more. I'm thinking about you when you did that. It was like you went from working entrepreneur to real estate. So it took me a long time to get into real estate. You kind of went right into it, which is real cool. What made real estate stick for you? Why didn't you die try? I don't know, cars, selling cars or shoes or whatever. I don't know. Oh, because I've, tr I've tried a lot of things, man. This is a, I've been trying businesses since I was, you know, since 2015. Okay. But, you know, I was just trying different things, trying different things. Nothing, nothing stuck or probably I didn't stick with it. But, yeah. um, but at the time where I lost my, you know, lost my job, I had a kind of expensive lifestyle. So, I was I had to think of something that I can make some real money. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? I, I couldn't just go to something else that'll make a little bit of money. So the first thing I thought was, you know, was real estate. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. that's what made me go into the real estate world to, to at least start exploring options and things like that. You're looking for the big checks. I'm looking for the big checks. I've done a lot of stuff for the small checks. I've sold on eBay, I've sold shoes. And those, you know, small checks. I'm like, man, I didn't got good at selling. What can I sell for a big check? High trend, Ron Legrand and Dan Kennedy calls it high transaction value. Mm. Yeah. What can you do for high transaction value? Go ahead. Yeah. No, I was just saying, I after, you know, I, I became, I believe, a good seller. I was like, what can I sell to make me a lot of money at once? And I was just like, houses. Hmm. <laughs> you know, so. That's why that's why I stuck with it. And but what make my story unique is though is marketing. 
so when you're doing this stuff, you know, money and marketing goes to together. Um, I mean, if you don't have marketing bucks and marketing money to really stay afloat, it could be difficult. So I started using music. I've always loved music. I've always written rap music. You know, uh, I, I had to think of to do something different to stand out so I can, you know, start getting some traction. So I started using music for real estate, mm -hmm. rapping about real estate and, and doing just different ideas to get my name out to people and just stand out because relationships are everything. That's right. That's how I met you, brother. You know, just That's right. even one of my music videos and man, that that really started helping my, my influx of uh, the deals that I was doing. So it all just worked hand in hand, man. It's been crazy. Well, it's an honor to hear this story, man. I know that I can, I can only imagine a lot of my roundupers probably have a similar story. Yeah, man. So you're doing deals, deals, deals. What brings us to doing a real estate wholesaling course for new for beginners, Dutch? Why in the heck are you thinking about doing? Well, not thinking. You're doing this for Mother's Day. No. You, I could go ahead, D. No, no, man. First off, you know I have a lot of people that reach out to me, man, Dutch. How you do this, man? I want to learn this, man. Put me in a game with this. Put me in a game with that. Mm -hmm. And it's been, you know, I. Time consuming. I get with one friend, start training him. Then I get with another friend, start training him. Then I get with another friend. You know, then some of them stop wanting to learn. They fall off. And so it became very time consuming. I'm trying to help people who say they want to learn. But two months into it, they ain't in it no more. Well, it could be challenging. It could be yeah. challenging. You know, people got stuff yeah. going on. And, you know, no disrespect. It's just timing. Yeah. Yeah. And like I said, it, that's fine. But I was spending a lot of time and I'm losing a lot of time doing this for everybody. Boom, boom. Taking away, yeah. Yeah, taking away time. And uh, I just start thinking like, man, what if I just created a course? You know, so people who want to learn, you know, wow. I, they can just they can just go get it. You know, and I'm not hurting anybody. I'm not, you know, it, they can watch the courses at the leisure, learn it and do things like that. Just how I learned it. And, you know, I can help people. I can give the people what they want. They can give me what I want. I want my time back, and y'all want to get the knowledge. Let me let me create a course. That is so cool. So we got real estate. I'm gonna bring it on the screen, right, Dutch? Real estate wholesaling for beginners. Dropping Mother's Day weekend. This is so cool. Yeah, man. And I appreciate yeah. you, brother Chris, for you know having me with everything, man. Getting it, getting it together. This is so cool. So round up, we got Dutch. He's doing it. Tell us, go ahead and start with Dutch. With the re Why did you want to do this for beginners? Because you could do obviously anything under the sun. Um, Because at, at the beginning level, it's, it's really, really, it's where it starts, man. If you don't get it at the beginning level, you know, you might, ver you might veer off. At the beginning level, if somebody give it to you and give you some good information, you have a better chance of staying with it. You know what I'm saying? So I wanted to do something for beginners, for people who were like me, who knew nothing about nothing. <laughs> but, you know, they just want a good source where they can find out some information, man. There's so much information on YouTube. I'm looking, trying to put pieces together. Yeah, you can't piece it together. It's impossible. So I went very, very hard, you know, my first couple of years. And, man, I want to give back. You know, I'm, I'm proud to to put out something, man, that my friends and family and people who want to learn, you know, uh, to have access to. So that's why I did it, man, to just really give something to the people. Because you know you're going to always receive. When you give, when you give, it comes back in abundance. So That's right. It's, that's it's, right. It's all good. You're right. So round up what we're doing today. I wanted to, I asked Dutch to do this. Uh, there's an email list below, or if you could just go to uh, Deals by Dutch. If you, there's a link in the video description, that would, uh, there's an email where you can sign up to just say, hey, Dutch, let me know when that course is going to come out. It will be Mother's Day weekend, y'all. Mother's Day weekend is an honor, man. We talked about Dutch and I, I'm going to tell you, I'm, I'm transparent. We've been talking about this for months. Months, right? We're talking about Dutch. He, he put it together and I'm like, man, when is the best time? When is the best time? So I'm thinking about love, you know, Mother's Day love. We thought about tax day, the 15th, April that. And before that, it was whatever. And now... Mother's Day is all about loving your mom and having some type of a, you can't, yeah, relationship with moms. What better weekend to say, listen, 
this is all about love and loving yourself and trying to figure out how to make some extra money. What up, Bubba? You can say what up. Hello. Hey, Bubba. Uh, uh, don't forget to go check out my video that I'm going to make um, today. So. Okay. We're going to make it today. Yeah. She's going to be doing videos eating uh, food, a food eater. <laughs> Those people make money, man. They just sit there and they just right. show people eat food. You seen that? Yeah. It's crazy. So thank you, Bubba. Thank you. Round up Mother's Day weekend, and there's a link in the video description where you can put your email on it, and and then you'll know exactly. Because you know, I've already talked to Dutch. We're gonna give you some bonuses and some goodies and some some sweet stuff for that weekend only. It'll be that weekend only. If you get over that weekend, you're gonna get a whole bunch of different stuff. So Dutch, what uh is just give me an oh, an, out, an overlay or a forty thousand foot view of what's in this thing, man? What can, what can we expect when we see this uh, real estate wholesaling for beginners uh, training course? Um, from the ground up, man, uh, if you if you want to get into real estate and you know you have zero knowledge, <laughs> I'm talking, you don't know where to start. You know, I'm starting from that point, you know, uh, explaining to you exactly what it is. And the, the good thing about the course, I made it to a point where you can grow into it. You can watch it, you know, as a beginner. But as you, you start getting your skills up, it's still applied to you. You know, I tried to make a lot of complex thing and a, co a lot of complex things and just really explain them real simple, you know, uh, and just to make it for somebody for mm -hmm. the state for dummies. If you just knew nothing, you know, I'm going to show you how to find the properties. You know, I'm going to show you how to contact the, the, the people who own the properties. Mm -hmm. I'm going to show you how to negotiate with them, mm -hmm. you know, uh, get them under a contract, how to find an end buyer. Sweet. You know, how to find a title company, everything, you know, just everything you need to get it to get up and going and being and being very effective. So I think the main thing is people want to know how to find them. And I know before you had done some text message stuff, is that still applicable right now? Yep. Uh, text blast masterclass. Yeah. Uh, so within this course, you, you're going to also learn, you know, the texting uh, method and the strategy, you know, uh, give you some education on band signs. You know, just, you know, little things, how to how to tour a house, how to take the pictures, mm -hmm. you know, things that just, you know, get you up and running. If you're serious about making a change, if you're serious about, you know, having another tool in your tool belt, mm -hmm. you apply this stuff. Yeah, it works. Sweet, sweet. Tell me about the documents, because I know when I was starting out, I'm like, how in the hell? How do, I get the kind, how do I get the paperwork to give to the people to sell me the house? And then how do I link the cash buyer up with the seller? I mean, you know, it's so, so foggy for me. And I don't, I don't know about everybody. Well, good thing, you know, Chris, you know, we talked about this. So I will include the documents, the, the purchase agreement that you signed with the, with the seller. Uh, I got a quick repair sheet. So if you know nothing about repairs and foundation you know i got a quick little sheet that you can reference to to give you numbers on some estimations and things like that you know i, I uh including the the document that you when you find your end buyer you can assign the property over over to them so you know i'm giving you some docs that you can get started like immediately good 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 they're gonna get they're gonna be able to download all that stuff yes sir come included with it so we have the purchase and sales agreement and then whatever document linking up the cash buyer with the seller yes sir jv agreement document what is that do you tell me about that so a jv is a joint venture that's that's when two people work in a deal together and we just split the profits so say you're new you find a property but you don't know how to find a buyer and you contact me i find the buyer you got, you got the house. I got the buyer. We connect them. If we make ten thousand, we make five thousand a piece. We make twenty thousand, we make ten thousand a piece. Mm -hmm. We split. We split it. This is a joint venture. So I also included a document that you can do joint ventures with other with other investors. Sweet, sweet. I know a lot of people were, well, let me ask for me, I was like, I didn't really want to be around a lot of other wholesalers starting out, but I learned that it's kind of cool because you can kind of make money together. You want to kind of touch on that because some people might think, and even they were teaching that when I was coming up, it wasn't that, like, like this joint venture thing is relatively new. Mm -hmm. Back in the day, we was like, you know, trying to hold it all to the best. I actually, 
I actually prefer that more than anything. Why? Because, man, it takes a lot of work to do deals by yourself. You got to mine a deal, find a house. You do that, then you got to go and you got to find a buyer. So it's like a man, this process that can be very tiresome. So I would rather do one side. If I find a house, I want to find somebody who has a buyer. If you find a house, I got to buy it for you. It mm-hmm. makes it easier and it make your deal flow consistent. So if you're doing deals with 10, 10 20 people, man, you're doing five, six deals a, a, a month, you ain't getting the whole profit, but 50% of 5,000 is 20, what, 2,500? Mm-hmm. 50% of 10,000 is what, 500, 500, mm-hmm. Yeah. The money can still come at a-, a Less work. A, with, with, with less work, you know? So I actually prefer that. That's so crazy how you, when you open your mind up, and it's easier to, to, in my opinion, if they got a deal and you got buyers, it's almost easier. You just match them up. Yeah. I mean, you making five grand on a phone call. God. You know? Hey, man, yeah, I got a, somebody with a property. You want it? Okay. All right. <laughs> I found your buyer. Let's go. You know? That is so cool. <laughs> the Roundup, we're working on Dutch's real estate wholesaling training course. You can go get registered up on the email list just to join the list so you'll know when you're going to be able to get the goodies, right? Uh, if you go to dealsbydutch.com, it's going to be there. And we're still working on the site. It's got a few, the graphics kind of got messed up. I don't know how. They changed the image size on me, but it, it works fine on your phone. It, it works fine on, on the computer and on the phone, but it looks a little funky on the computer. But you can still register with your email address and your name so we can send you an email when Dutch gets ready to release this thing. Yeah. And I got to at least give shout out to George Floyd's out here tonight. R.I.P. Homie, man. I'm just looking at the news, Dutch. You got what you saying to that dog? I'm like, uh, you know, man, you hold your breath every time you get a verdict because you already expected a worse. You know, I'm like, y'all know where we live. Why would you even expect anything different? I feel I'm, I'm once again transparent. I'm like, y'all already know what this is, right? I gave up. I, I man, look, it's just it's just um progress. I love progress. there you go. Man. Progress. I love progress. progress. So that's what I say to that man. Good, good. Keep it like that. Round up. I'm, I, I just want to make sure I got to use my platform, man. It's on my spirit. RIP to the homie. And uh, this is one step. We don't know what the sentencing thing will be, but at least we got some type of justice at, at the moment. So, right. Round up. We'll get to some QA, Dutch. So you got finding cash buyers, negotiating, estimating repairs, finding the low, motivated sellers, the text blast stuff. You got your documents. And then you have some other software now. I know you got, I've seen everything already. You got the interviews with different people, different computer apps to find houses, all that stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like I said, it's it's a course for beginners, but you can grow with it. You know, it's it it's very simple, but I give you tools that when once you want to step your game up, you can use them and implement them. You know, uh, okay. so I think I, I think I covered it, man, for the people from first first to five years. You know. That, that that first five, man, or, you know, something to grow into. Wholesale is just important. I know I don't do a lot of talking about it. I like the younger guys like you to come in and talk about it because you know all the new technology. You know all the new skip tracing. Are you going to show them how to do the skip tracing, Dutch, and find finding, like, mortgage information and HOA liens? I know you did that before. Yeah, uh, show you all that. Show you how, you know, I find people who need to sell, not just want to sell. People who are, you know, pre foreclosure, people who are behind on taxes, people who, you know, going through hardships, got liens on their properties and things like that. And that's cool. how I like to find them. And I, I will show you how to do all that, of course. Thank you so much, D. So round up deals by Dutch. You can head, on, head on over there and just put your email address in so you don't miss all the goodies. Or there's a link in the video description. You can just go right there and uh, sign right up. It's the same, it's the same website. It's an honor, my friend. Let me see if we've got some Q&A here. A few people. Thank you so much for supporting our channel. Jarda, new member. Uh, Dutch, Big Brody. What up? What up? Illinois, J. Hill. Um, <laughs> you know what that is? Nah, nah, nah. But it's just cool, man, just to see. Yeah, Dutch, be, IG be popping. Yeah, he's, uh, I'm telling y'all. Did, y'all have no idea. This t- <laughs> <laughs> y'all have no clue. <laughs> y'all have no clue, man. 
I uh, can't wait to drive it down there. Dutch, you got to hit his follow back up with you in a few two to three months. Wu Tang. Okay. Uh, Dutch, uh, Michael wants to know what was your previous job, brother? Man, I was a I was a GM for American Airlines. That sounds pretty sweet. Yeah, yeah. I've, I've been in the airline industry for twenty years. Wow. Yeah, so I had to move my way on up, brother. Mm-hmm. Sweeping the flow. You know, moved on up. Management, management. Top dog. I'm playing golf. Black card. Like a lot of people see that I rap and they don't know I have that corporate side of me. You know, but I do have a, a corporate background. That's crazy. Yeah. I would never guessed that. Never guessed that. Uh, somebody says, oh, yeah, Bubba. Thank you, Serena. Bubba loves to come on here. She comes on. Gene, what up, homie? Uh, I like to tap in with y'all. Yeah, get those doc, Get those wholesale docs. Cool. Yep. All that's going to be on there. Um, Serena, do you have to invest any money into fixing up wholesale properties? Great question. Great question. No, no money at all. Um, that's the good thing. Wholesaling, all you're pretty much doing is flipping paper. You know, you're getting the contract with the seller and you're getting the contract with the buyer and you just connecting the two and you're making a fee in the middle. You never touch the house. <laughs> You know, you never touch the house, so you don't have to invest no money. So I guess, Serena, a lot of, including me, starting off, it's almost like incomprehensible to try to understand how in the world you're linking up these people. Like, you're the middleman. It took me some time. I'm going to be honest with you. I'm like, man, why the hell is somebody going to pay me 10 grand? They can go do the deal. You know, why would somebody? Let me ask you, because Serena might not know. Why would I give you ten grand? Why in the heck am I gonna write you a check for ten thousand? And I've seen assignment fees up to a hundred k. Why am I give you the money, D? Why? I mean, why I just go to the seller myself? Because people don't want to do work. They want to. They want to. They want deals to come to them. They want the. They want it for the convenience. You know, it's tough going out here finding the houses that people want to sell them, finding good deals. So you know, these these end buyers, they'll pay a person like me because I'm out here looking for them. You know, and it make their life a lot easier. They don't want to do it. They don't want to mess with it. Mm. I'm one of those guys. Just, just call me up with a deal. I just want to write a check and get it over with. Yeah. Get over it. So Serena, who is that? Yeah, Serena. That's that's one of the people that uh and you can't necessarily once he has it locked up, um, uh, there's systems in place that you can't actually go around his contract. So once he has it, he's got it. Zoe Rolls here. What's up? What up, Chris and Dutch? What up, my homie? Zoe wants to know, are vacant non-owner occupied a good list of leads? I've tried calling those owners and the majority don't want to sell. Dutch knows all about that uh, skip tracing and stuff. The vacant non-owner occupied a good list of leads. Um, If you don't have the money to do a shotgun approach, to me, like vacant non-owner occupied, that's that's a broad aspect of people. You know, you're gonna get a lot of leads, a lot of people. But how I search it, I do vacant, non-owner occupied with liens up to five thousand. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Then that'll break my list down. It's gonna be a short amount of people, but these small amount of people are very motivated. Mm. You know, and so versus me looking at this broad list, I'll make it a little niche. And I think, you know, starting off good niche lists, I've always worked off niche lists. They're not as big or not expensive to call and skip trace. You know, get you a nice niche list. And I think that'll work better for you. But with that, it's so broad. You're going to talk to a lot of people who just don't want to sell. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Sweet. Yeah. At the end of the day, Zo. Texting and all that stuff, it's just a volume. It's just a numbers game. Yeah. You got to just be sending out. Don't beat yourself up, man. I think that's just in real estate in general, would you say, D? I mean, just, just numbers. Yeah. It's, just part, it's just part of the game. Yeah. You know? yeah. The majority of people in general don't want to sell their house. I mean, why? they don't want to sell. Mike Epps, hey, how long do you hold the wholesale deal before you close out a deal with an end buyer? Great report on George Floyd. Thank you, my friend. Okay. Okay. So how uh, wholesale deals work, when you get the seller 
you know, under agreement, there's a time frame on this purchase agreement. You know, so say I get this house on the first on my on my uh, contract is going to say the thirtieth. So I know now I have thirty days to find an inbuyer. You know, and you put stipulations and things into the contract within the contract, which is going to be on the contract. I give you that'll give you an opt out. If you can't find an in buyer in a certain amount of time, it'll be in a paperwork that you can just let it go. You ain't got to worry about it. Let's stay there for a minute, D, because I get it. I get that a lot. Chris, what if I can't find? I got the I got this house under contract and I can't find an in buyer. Good God, how many times do I hear that? Yeah, I mean, I think that's that's what people are afraid of when they hear this kind of method. They like this kind of strategy. I get this person under contract, man. I don't find an in buyer. Now I'm stuck. Now I gotta pay a hundred. No, it don't work like that. In the purchase agreement, it tells the person, hey, I got this amount of time to buy this house. And if I don't, if I don't like it within this amount of time, I can I can opt out and ain't nothing you can do about it. <clears throat> so that's on that's on the document. As long as you do what's on there, you 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 out of it in 50 days or 20 days or whatever you put, you fine, you know, no risk. Sweet, sweet. So roundup, if you're just joining us, I'm hanging out with my boy Dutch Jackson. We're going over his new real estate investing training course man real estate for newbies real estate investing for beginners real estate wholesaling driving mother's day weekend if you want more information if you want us to stay in touch with you just go to deals by dutch or there's a link in the video description dutch has done the honor for me to put this thing together recorded it and he's a master of videography so he's included some of the uh, audio and the, some of the songs which help you <laughs> For me, <laughs> I've beat it into my mind. Where did you get those ideas, Dutch, to kind of come up with that music, man? That's really amazing how you've uh, <laughs> you've had a hybrid of hip hop and real estate investing and put them together. How in the hell, man? I've been doing music my whole life, man, and um, I just did behind closed doors and things like that. When I started investing, man, I was just like, man, I got to stand out, man. What would make me stand out? Mm -hmm. All the music. I'm like, man, if I can make a real estate rap that don't sound corny, you know, you can't I, be what I think it could take. I think it could take off. So I and I started just putting little stuff here on the internet, and all of a sudden, man, people really started catching on and hitting me, and that's how I got a lot of my deals through my music. You know, that's so crazy, man. So it was. It's almost like finding a new passion with real estate, and I rekindled an old passion. With my music and able to to use it together, man. Oh. That's something, I'm, right? I'm giving your purpose, bro. I'm so, man. I'm just, I'm on cloud nine, brother. <laughs> I'm on cloud nine. <laughs> roundup, give that your thumbs up, my real estate roundup homies. Give them a thumbs up and please share this with anybody else. We got a whole bunch of questions to go over here. You blowing up. Uh, how long did you do that? Gary Ferion. Look at that baby. I know you ain't sleeping, my brother. Do you put your name on the documents or do you use an LLC, Dutch? You can do both. Uh, you don't have to have an LLC to do this. Talk yeah. about that, Dutch, because I think I mentioned that. And what did we talk? I talk to people uh, about playing business, playing business. Yeah. I want you to be transparent because I'm a Ronald Graham was like Chris. I want you to get to a check. There, you do need an LLC, but get some money coming in. Yeah. So go ahead, D. Get some money first, man. Like you know, put your name on a put your name on an agreement. I did. I did I that did. a long time, man. A long time. I know? did too. <laughs> and it make people feel comfortable when you do that too. Like you know, yeah, my name is Dutch Jackson. There you go. Oh, you you buying this for you? Like yes, I. Yes. You know what? I didn't even thought about that. <laughs> you know, it, it seems personal. You know, so you could do both. You could do your name or you could do an LLC. So that's another thing. You don't need to have a company, a license, or nothing to start this. You just get busy. What's, you know, it's weird. Even if you put it in your name, Dutch, you're going to sign it. Yeah. To LLC if you want. Yeah. yeah. You can do that. I might try to start that. Wow. I never thought about that. Real <laughs> personable. Real personable. Uh, I got another member here, another member question. So unlike subject to Serena L, in wholesaling, a property with a lien is a good thing. 
Is it because the cost of the lien is rolled into the price for the buyer? Does the buyer have to be made aware of the liens? Okay, so when I say finding a property with liens, it's not it's not that the lien is making the deal sweeter. It's the motivation I know that's in the seller. So when I'm looking for houses, I look for different things on a house like liens, divorce, you know, behind on taxes. It's a method of just kind of pinpointing these people because I'm going to tell you a little secret, a little gem. The first thing people start let slip are like HOA fees and stuff like that. When they start to go through hardship, that's a sign of motivation. If people behind a thousand dollars on HOA fees, something wrong. You know, so I try to show people in the course how to look for those type of people where you just not shotgun approaching. You're looking for people who going through something that that makes your chance better of getting a good deal and getting a property on a discount because, you know, somebody they lost their job. They just want a way out. Mm-hmm. So that's what I mean by I find properties with liens on. So you're not necessarily looking to deal with that lien. You're just looking for the motivation from the seller. Exactly. Gotcha. So, sir, who was that? Serena L., one of my roundup members. So, yeah, Dutch subject two, you're going to take over all that stuff, but he's just looking for the motivation. I'm just looking for the motivation. KPI, if one could say. Uh, man, good question, y'all. We're here with Dutch. If you want to get signed up for our mailing list to know exactly when Dutch's deal is going to drop Mother's Day weekend, just go to Deals by Dutch, or that link is in the video description. Mike Epps, do you guys believe in the COVID vaccine? I don't want to know if you want to go there right now, but Dutch, I'm going to let you lead on that. Yeah, man. I, I, brother, I don't even know. I, I know one thing, though. <laughs> they making it like it's a choice now. What you mean? But in another, look, another five weeks, they're going to be like, oh, no, you don't need to take It's up to you. But you can't go into Walmart without it. Oh, shit. You can't get on the airplane without it. But you ain't got to take it. Oh. But you can't leave the country without doing it. So right now they're making it like it's your choice. It's already um because I'm so flying cool. to Florida next week. It's already on my ticket. Like you can't even book the ticket if you're going out of the country. You know you got it. And I didn't even know that. Wow, you can you can't come in the country without it. So I don't know, brother. I don't know if it's real or not, but I think people are gonna end up taking it. Yeah, basically. Yeah. Uh oh, they can't be ever at the same time. Denise. What's your criteria for lien leads? No mortgages, maybe. Good question. Oh, uh, well, doing a wholesale, you know, you got to have some kind of equity in the game, you know. So uh, the mortgages can be there, but you kind of want your mortgages pretty low because it's kind of it's, it's kind of hard to wholesale. Say, say you got a property that's three hundred thousand dollars. They got a three hundred thousand dollar mortgage, and you want to get this three hundred thousand dollar house in the contract. But nope, how you gonna get this at a discount? You can't, because they still owe three hundred thousand. You can't put them on a contract for two hundred thousand. It won't work, you know. So uh, I want mortgages low, and the liens. Like I said, my criteria for liens, I I know how to look for solo liens. I know how to look for people with on child support liens. You know, uh, like I said again, HOA liens. Pain. I don't even care what kind of lien it is. I like the, the amount of the lien because the amount of the lien uh, kind of tells me where the motivation sit. Somebody behind, if somebody got all these liens on their property and you know behind on stuff like that, that's your better chances because looking for these leads is like a needle in a haystack. So you, when you're looking for certain people, you want to you want to narrow that search down. I go look for a million people where you can pinpoint twenty people who are very motivated. Yeah. Yeah, that list is everything. Yeah. Good question, Denise. Uh, Zoe Royalty Dutch, what is your method of contacting your sellers? Do you do cold calling, texting, direct mail? I do strictly texting. Yeah, he's the best. He's the master. Strictly, I, man, I, I text, and that's my thing. Like I say, everybody, everything works, but just what works for you, you know? Texting, I, that's all I do. Man, I come in my system. I just did a deal with the last time me and you talked, Chris. Mm-hmm. I opened up my software and it was a deal just sitting in that somebody I text like four months ago. They just hit me back now. That's why I like text because you just sit in their phone. 
unless they delete you, it is you text them, it'll sit in their phone, they might think about it, man. They'll hit you back months later. Do and, people delete texts? Hmm? I don't know. I can't remember the last time I deleted a text. Yeah, you know, you pick a day out the month to do that. You'll just be sitting down and you'll roll. You're like, man, I got all these texts I need to delete, you know, but people keep people keep them in their phone. I just keep them in there. I, I can't remember the last time I deleted a text to Dutch. I don't know, man. Yeah. That's a cool one. So, Zoe, I promise you, whenever I have a problem, I say I have a geek squad. My wife is the geek. She does all that, but Dutch will tell you, whenever we got a problem, she just called Dutch up. Because <laughs> like, we don't, Dutch is the master on that. Uh, Whitey, what do you? I hope I said that right. Sorry if I didn't. Do you let the seller know you are wholesaling the property, Dutch? Um, I mean, it depends. You know, I like to be very, very transparent. A lot of times I like to go in and tell, you know, sellers that I'm an investor and I have a team of investors. It's not just me. Me and my partners like to find properties and flip homes. So what I'm going to do with this purchase agreement, I'm going to submit this to my business partners. You're not lying, you know? So I don't tell people I'm wholesaling. I tell people that I got a network of business partners, buyers, and we do deals together, man. You know, that's, kind of, that. that's telling them That's telling them everything they need to know. Yeah, you don't need to be all descriptive about it. I'm going to be chopping this around. Yeah. Just be quiet, y'all. Be quiet. I know I just tell them from time to time, I got a list. I have a pool of buyers that we work with from time to time. Then they usually they don't even care, man. Yeah, they don't care. They're ready to go. They like, am I getting ten grand or am I getting what? what <laughs> when I get my money? <laughs> <laughs> healing, what up, healing? Good to see you, my friend. Peace, Kitchen Dutch. What up? Uh, so Dutch, Denise, can you uh, do you use any VAs or do you call your leads yourself? Good question. I do everything myself. I'm trying to get to a point. I'm a control freak, so I do everything myself. And what I'm what I'm showing you. I'm showing you how to kind of maintain it yourself. You can always get VAs. You know, when you step your game up after you do two, three, four, five deals, get you some money first before you start paying people. You know, plus you want to kind of learn the skills so you know how to teach people how to do it. You know, so I do everything myself. So when I get to a point where I want to start delegating, because the why I like doing wholesaling and working by myself, I don't have to deal with anybody. It's just me. You know, so I haven't gotten to that point where I just start building the team out. But when I do start building the team out, I will know how to do everything because I got experience doing everything so I can train my people the right way. Here's the thing, Dutch. I think I see people try to scale before it's time and not everybody needs to scale. And, I, you know, it, it all depends on who you hang out with. Like, I know I used to hang out with dudes that are doing 100 deals a year and that pressure hanging out with them. I'm like, do I want to beat 100 deals? I do not want to be the hundred deal a year guy. I just don't want that. You know, so everybody has their thing and doing 10, 20 deals a year, you can have a phenomenal life. Phenomenal. <laughs> man, look, and, and like I said, you, like you say, uh, scaling too quick. Man, I, got, I don't, I ain't want to get out the corporate world to get in the corporate world. I was managing you, people. You back in it. I'm, I have 500 employees, man, in America. Wow. I get out of that and I come here and start building them, man. Leave me alone. I'm telling you, dog. <laughs> but to, you know, but I do everything myself right now to answer your question. Ooh, Denise, I think a lot of gurus, you know, I, I see the guys on the internet uh, training VAs to do all the stuff. I promise you, dude, you have to manage the people. Either you're going to manage money or people. Money or people. So Dutch right now is just having his money go out. He's got text messages and stuff. When you start managing those people, man, it's not. It seems like it's easy, but and it takes less. You got to do more deals to make less. I mean, you do more deals, you make more money, but you make less per deal. With D solopreneur, that, that's kind of how we are. Lan Ray, is that right? Lan Ray, Olali. I hope I did my best. What bla text blasting software service are you? What's blah, blah, what blast texting service are you using, Dutch? I'm using a company called The Smarter Contact. Um, they've been around a couple of years, and I've tried a lot of different platforms. 
but theirs seem to be the most effective and the easiest to use. Mm-hmm. You know, so the smarter contact is the uh, software that I use. Sweet. Round up, go ahead and get signed up. Deals by Dutch coming off Mother's Day. I got to make sure I have people coming on, coming off and on. Round up, uh, it's going to be for beginners, real estate wholesaling for beginners training course, Mother's Day weekend. Dutch is going to walk you step by step how he has built his real estate business and he did 20 deals his first year. And how long have you been in the game, Dutch? Man, it's, I think it's, it'll be what, four years almost? So it's coming up, coming almost, up on four yeah. years. almost four. Which in real estate investing years, you are a baby. Yeah. yeah. You're a baby dog. New baby. Yeah, I mean, you know, hanging out with guys, my mentors, and fool's been in it since the eighties. <sighs> Denise wants to know, can you discuss a little what's in the course if you haven't already? Dutch, you can do it real quick. I mean, that's we're doing a quick re- refresher for people that matter just to come on. Okay. Yeah. Um, everything from starting out if you have zero knowledge. You know, zero knowledge, how to find uh, motivated sellers, how to kind of you know pinpoint where there's a problem if they have a lien, you know, uh, divorce, things like that. How to find the properties, some methods and strategies on how to find properties, what to look for in a property, you know, um, what parts in the city to target. You know, as far as zip codes and things like that. So mm-hmm. I let, I just I, gi- I give you real basic, but re- very effective. A lot of things that it took hours for me to find out. Hours and days and weeks and months. I was able to consolidate <laughs> it, you know. And so you you guys can find something in, in one place versus having to look everywhere for a bunch of different information. I'm trying to put so much, but in a simple way. So you can get it. Thank you for that, D. Thank you. Thank you. Cash buyers. Uh, Naz, Ness, Nessier, how long does it take you to sell the pro- the property usually? Good question, D. So you got a house under contract. Mm-hmm. Boom. I'm like, I'm so lazy now because I know, how, you know, it's like, when you do it for a while, I don't even, it's like, do I got to send an email out? Damn. Well, <laughs> you know, I mean, I'm to a point now where I've, I've done so many deals. I have my property sold before I even have them on the contract. Yeah, you don't even. You okay? So you let them know. You let your main. Wait, I let you explain it, D. I'm sorry. Yeah, so I'm to a point now where I have I have buyers already that that I know and trust. The minute I talk to a seller, the minute I know I'm about to get some under contract, I let my buyers know. Hey, I got this property. You, I'm about to go pick it up. You want it? They tell me yeah or nay. I fill out the contract with them, give it right to my buyer. You know, we it's already done. But so it just depends on uh, your networking, you know, uh, to find a buyer. And in the course, I show you how to find buyers. You might get some on the contract. I show you how to just write, go to Facebook, you know, find a buyer. And so and it will depend if you got a deal or not. A lot of times we get properties on the contract and it's not low enough. So they're not appealing to buyers. But if you get you a, a deal at the right price, trust me, it'll fly like that. Yeah, I like to I, I liken cash buyers to sharks in a barrel. Yeah. I mean, we're just waiting. A little bit of water, all these cash guys. We're just waiting for the deal to be dropped in. Which one's gonna buy it? Going you know, crazy. that deal is like this a piece of steak or something. Uh Zoe wants to know. I heard texting is more effective than cold calling from other wholesalers. D, what would you say? Um, I believe everything works. Everything works. I, nothing doesn't work. Because I know people killing it cold calling. Mm-hmm. You know, I think with text messaging, it's just you get a quick response. You could touch so many people. You know, how long it take to call a hundred people? How long it take to talk to hundred people? Hours. So you saving a, you saving a little time and you getting direct. You know, but some people, some people don't like text. Some people like you know conversation so everything works i just like text messaging because i can reach a lot of people in a short period of time yeah but what do you like what do you like uh oscar diaz wants to know what about cities that re- cities and areas that require a realtor license in order to wholesale d um there's not i'm trying to think of cities that need realtor license you don't need a realtor license to do this i think the only cities was uh 
was it OKC? Well, it was two states, Oklahoma. And was I, it Illinois? I heard something about Chicago area, but I don't know. Oklahoma, Illinois, and now Philadelphia or something like that. I don't know, D. So it's three. I think it's three states that you need some kind of license to do wholesaling. But other than that, here's should. the thing: you can always ask for forgiveness. I remember when I was doing my training with homebusters. The man was like, "Even if you do screw up, you can always ask for forgiveness." But I don't know what city or what state requires a license, D. I, I, I have no idea. A good thing we bring that up because guess what, Chris? What? You can do this from your house, and you can do this in another city. No. Oh. You know what I'm saying? I can wholesale from my house. I know how to find lists. I'm talking to people. I'm from St. Louis. I'm in Texas. I still do deals in St. Louis from oh. Texas. Wow. Wow. So this ain't just a manual thing. You get good at this thing. You can start doing it. Yeah, you might be in Illinois as well as illegal, but you're doing a deal in Tennessee. Mike Epps, when you first started in real estate, D, how long was it before you quit your day job? I think I see that word, operative word there is quit. Well, the, the job quit me first now. You got to remember that. <laughs> so my back was against the wall. And I think in some situations, sometimes <clears throat> things work out when you force. A lot of us, we be in positions where we don't like where we at, but we comfortable. You know, but when you forced and you know you ain't a check not coming, I took it serious. So uh, I got into I was in real estate before they let me go. But when they let me go, I took action. Big difference, right? Where you got, we got no money coming in. Oh, man. That's the real. Big difference. Zoe wants to know any quick tips on building a cash buyer list. Quick tips. Um, Facebook. Build a quick cash buyers list. You go on some of these uh, real estate groups in your city, looking to build my cash buyers, DM me, PM me, whatever. Man, you'll get buyers that quick, that quick from Facebook. Nice. People, nice. Under, people underused uh, the internet. Chris Birch, how are you not getting the vaccine? I got my second shot, and my 5G cell service has never been better. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, Chris? <laughs> Blessing, uh, first time viewer. Welcome to the roundup, my friend. Are you an investor? We do a little bit. We do a little bit. Can I contact you? Yeah, D. How do people get in touch with you, D? Oh man, you can email me at d <coughs> uh, dvn world at gmail dot com. Man, send me some deals, man. If you got some I can analyze a property. Let's create a relationship. Let's do a deal together uh, in all cities. Let's do it. So Rita wants to know, are wholesale buyers typically investors or do you also target the average home buyer, D? Um, are wholesale buyers typically investors? Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, they typically investors because of the properties we get. A lot of those properties need work. Yeah, they can't be. You know, we get it at, we get it at a discount. So a lot of these properties that we're going to get, now you go, you're going to get some eventually that's in very good conditions. But for the majority, we are getting properties that need work. So we're looking for a buyer who's an investor who wants a deal, and they're going to throw their own money in it and fix it up. Yeah, Serena, um, generally speaking, I don't want to speak for Dutch, but from my experience, these houses cannot be financed with traditional financing. Dutch? Yeah. So you're not going to get an owner-occupant that says, oh, I'd like to... And financing companies, mortgage companies are not going to pay a pay an assignment fee either. So generally speaking, and cash buyers, we just might like I'm closing tomorrow. I'm going to go to the bank. I'm going to bring the money. You know, it's like you don't you want to have bona fide cash buyers because we are the easiest people to work with on planet Earth. We bring a cashier's check to closing. There are no points. There are no appraisal is nothing but somebody like me going to the bank getting the funds and going to closing and giving Dutch's check. Yep. That's it. Yep. There's no underwriter. Oh, well, they didn't like the way the wood looked up there, the window. Did. None of that stuff. Right. None of that stuff. So that's when you know you got a real cash bar. Uh, Zoe wants to know, what did you do when the seller is determined to see a proof of funds? Hmm, I never had that happen. That's crazy, Zo. You know what? I've been doing this and no one has ever asked me to proof of funds. I think that, Chris, would you agree that's more of a conventional way? Like when you you going on on the MLS and things acting for proof of funds, you gotta 
have all this paperwork and things like that. I'm I'm not sure, but no one has ever asked me for proof of funds. But I have seen on the internet where you do have um, resources that you can go out and help you have uh, proof of funds. But I've never been asked. That. As long as I've been doing this, though, uh, I will say my gut is telling me that you might be doing a little too much talking when you're with the seller, because the more you talk, the more. And I'm not saying that that's a no disrespect. The less you say, in my opinion, is the better. You know, I've never had any. Wow. Never had a seller ask me for proof. I don't even know. Did your seller even know what a proof of funds letter is, uh, Dutch? No. A, a lot of people, and you will realize that when you start educating yourself in real estate, a lot of people have no clue what a purchase assignment agreement is, proof of funds letter, nothing. All they know is you you going to buy my house or not. Yeah, you know, my money. Motivated sellers are different. A lot of stuff they don't care about. You know? You're talking about so people on the, on the MLS and realtors. Real, you're talking about real estate professionals. Because yeah. I would. I mean, if I'm like, well, you got the money? Yeah, we'll see it. Uh, Nasser, once you find a wholesale buyer, wholesale buyer, what is a wholesale buyer? Is it, okay, your cash buyer. How do you find a seller in order to close the deal? I, she might have that backwards D. Oh, okay. No, I show you. I'll show you in the course. You know, if you find a if you find a buyer, you can actually start collecting buyers before you even have a property. Oh, okay. Right. You know, you can start getting on Facebook and just, hey, you know, anybody looking for properties in St. Louis, send me your information, and you can find buyers that way and start collecting and building a buyers list. And you start asking your buyer, what areas are you looking in? Yeah. What kind of houses you like? And then it turned into that type of thing where now you just headhunting for your buyers. You going looking for exactly what they want. So when you find it, it ain't going to be hard to sell. Boom. Over. Bah. Yeah. That's when your life gets easy. Serena, she got it. Love how he simplified. Yes. Dutch simplifies it all the way down, broken down to the lowest level that it can be broken to. Round up family. Real estate investing and actually real estate wholesaling for beginners. Mother's Day weekend. Deals by Dutch. Make sure you head to the video description below to sign up for the email list. You don't want to miss the goodies we're going to give out that weekend. You know we're going to give you a special. I mean, this is what we do on that weekend only for people that come in for that weekend. Mother's Day weekend. Good old Mother's Day. Good old Mother's Day. Man. Uh... Dutch, give them your handle too. Let me, let me, how did they get it on Facebook? Is it just your name on Facebook? I'm going to type yeah, it in. Um, you can search me on social media, Dutch Jackson, uh, Dutch Jackson One, Facebook, Instagram. It's all Dutch Jackson. Um, so it, it won't be hard to find. We got two YouTube videos out. You know, you hit me up on my email, hit me up on my Facebook, Instagram. I was, I'm very responsive. How about your email, D? Oh, email. DV, DVN Dutch Victor Network DVN World at gmail.com. Uh, Nazir Nessier wants to know can you wholesale a property without renovating it, Dutch? Check this out. You can wholesale a property without even ever being to it. You can see it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, can, you can wholesale a house without touching it, man. Yes, you don't even have to step a foot inside of it. You really got to see it. No. That's crazy, man. So, <laughs> anyway, so Dutch, thank you for doing this roundup. Before we get out of here, listen, Dutch is taking the time out of his life. I love it when men take times out of their lives to take a snapshot of what has worked for them, like I, like we do here all the time. So it's almost like in my DNA. I like to hang out with people that think, like, think alike. So Dutch is doing the same thing for you. Uh, bringing together a newbie real estate course that will help you get started from the bottom. Start it right now. Get started right now. That's why it's for beginners. You want to you, just right now, man. Right. I love it, dude. That's the that's the attitude I have about everything. Right now, let's get started. Uh -uh. No excuses, man. Right now. Come on. Tell me about your life when you started investing in your education, D. Oh man, man. I, you know, we spend money on everything: cars, clothes. You know, but we never think about investing into our, you know, education. 
Or growth, yeah. Yeah, our growth. And I started, man, looking on YouTube like years ago and start realizing, I'm like, man, all this free education out here, man, it's, it's crazy. So I invested in a course, my first course. It was like $100, man. It hurt, too. Because, you, know, <laughs> you know, people like to buy stuff that they can feel in their hands. It's hard for us to buy things that we can't touch. That's where it's headed, though. You know, so I bought that course I couldn't touch. I could just watch it. I was like, let me watch this, man. <laughs> <laughs> and learned the course and, man, made it tenfold back, made my money tenfold back from the course. And I was just like, is this course stuff real, man? And I, I started getting addicted to just buying courses. Every year I wanted to buy a course to make myself feel better, man, because I'm like, at least I'm buying something for me, you know, and just – Keep keep uh, getting different courses and keep learning these skill sets that people cannot take from me. Can't take from me, bro. You got a skill set, a special skill set where you can always make money, always. Wholesaling, I can always make money. Uh, it'll just come to me. Somebody be talking, hey, man, my auntie needs to sell a house. Okay, that's a check, you know, because that's a skill that I have. So mm -hmm. you guys want to get whatever courses you buy. Whatever. Start investing in yourself, getting these extra skills, man. So you stuff okay, you ain't got to depend on nobody, you know. I love it. I love it, dude. That's funny you mentioned that. So I'm spending four thousand next week. I'm going to Florida, West Palm Beach on Monday. This dude Patrick has a um, his, his tickets for two to ten thousand. It's sold out already. And then you know, just spending money. It's almost like now. Spending money is a requirement for me. I'm looking, thinking about for you as well. It's like I see you, even the stuff you sent me on it, a couple of things we shared with each, with, with each other. Yeah, man. It's 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 essential, man. Like It's just like investing in anything else, man. If you don't invest in, into your mind, how much can you grow if you don't invest here, you know? Sweet, sweet. D, I see somebody saying they want to get some real-time access Maybe we can throw in for the people that come in on the Mother's Day weekend. We'll throw in uh, a one day event or a master class with you, D. Would you mind doing that and kind of helping people push them uh, over the edge, the people that are up, up against the hurdle? No, 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 no problem at all. No problem at all. You know, I love talking to people, man, and trying to help people out and things like that. Like I said, I was in corporate America. I was managing a lot of people. So I'm used to it. Sweet. So what we do is um, we're working. This, this, um, that's why I like bringing you on. Two minutes, I'll be done. Yep, two minutes. You getting in the shower now? Okay, I'll be done about two, two to five minutes. Um, so, D, we'll, I just want to make sure we're putting this on record. We're going to put together, for people that only come in for Mother's Day weekend, that will do a one-day thing where he just goes over step-by-step, step, boom, 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 outlining what he does. I'm telling y'all, man, that man is the real deal. And Dutch, you'll take time to answer questions and go over them to make sure they got it all covered? Most definitely. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. All right, Roundup. So listen, tomorrow I got Bill Brunchick. He's coming on. He's doing an all, oh, once again, he's doing a one-day event for Subject 2. And then Thursday, I'm going to do a private money training for you. Private money. you got to learn how to raise private money if you want any longevity in this business. There will be a time where the lenders are going to say, you stink. They will not loan you any more money. And then what are you going to do? So uh, for me, it was best to learn how to raise private capital now because they cut me off once I had those three, four closures. I couldn't borrow any money. I was making plenty of income, but they just couldn't get any loans. So Thursday, I'm going to do a private money training. So make sure you uh, stay tuned for that too. Dush, final words, and we'll get up out of here, my friend. Man, I just want y'all to be safe, be happy. Um, you know, believe in yourself. Don't sleep on yourself. You know, and just realize how much power you have and, you know, much how much influence you have on yourself. So... Mm -hmm. I'm going to leave you out with that, man. Peace and blessings. That, so just in all, uh, there's a link in the video description. You can show, join our email list to be notified when the course comes out. And if you don't want to go there, just go to Deals by Dutch. And I'm sure you'll be seeing this plastered all over Dutch's uh, social media for the next few weeks. All right, Roundup, take a second. If we have poured into you tonight to subscribe to the channel. i got a smaller subscribe thing now. <laughs> <laughs> That damn block was killing me. <laughs> I still got the block though. Y'all give me a like if you like my new thing. 
subscribe to the channel, like the content, share with any other investors that need to get rocking and rolling, man. Listen, this thing is going to be changing soon. Prices are through the roof now, I will admit, but this thing will change. It's already changing a little bit, but it's coming, y'all. So, All right, Dutch, I'll talk to you soon, my friend. Round up, I love you. See you on the next, next video tomorrow. Bill Brunchick, subject to one-day training. Make sure you join us tomorrow at 5 o'clock. Peace. Peace.